good morning everyone today i'm going to discuss briefly uh, on the on the subject that is your international migration law and like i'll be dealing with the evolution and uh, the need of the international migration law but before going on to the evolution and the need of the international migration law first and foremost i want to like have a brief discussion on what is the actual meaning of international migration law so you see the very term that is a international migration law this is also a part of the international law you can say that it is a subset of public international law which you have uh, like already studied but um, and it is a part of the the human rights too it is a subset of human rights as a subject so you see that there are this particular like unit the very first unit which deals with the migration issue what is the meaning concept and definition of the international migration how it has evolved what is the need of the international migration then the sources of like you know the migration the role of the iom the unhcr so we will be dealing with this part first and foremost today like i'll go on what is the exact meaning of international migration law but before going into the meaning you see this very subject it deals only with the migration part that is like the the legislation which is dealing with the migration and that is also the in, in the international field so you know, you see that there are like in the there is like domestic laws and there are international law so in the domestic law also you can see that there are particular laws which are dealing with the migration issue as you can see about the like as in our indian constitution we have got the citizenship part that is part 2 of the indian constitution deals with the citizenship how the people acquire citizenship how they lose citizenship so in that manner you can see that that this particular issue is relating with the migration part that is the citizenship part that is our domestic laws so you have find about the citizenship amendment recently the citizenship amendment act how the people like you know there have been recent changes being made where there has been inclusion of sub people from bangladesh afghanistan from pakistan into india because of the migratory issues and so you can uh, relate that thing on the part of migration and uh, so we'll be dealing with only the migration part so before understanding the migration law you see there is a difference between there are three terminologies actually as you see there are uh, like you have you have got the term refugees you have got the term migrant and you are dealing with a uh, like another term is the is asylum seeker i hope when you have studied the public international law you have gone through it so this three things that is your asylum seeker the uh, migration migrant and uh, like you know your refugees refugees migrant and asylum seeker this three terminologies it seems to be that they are of similar type but they are not the same they depict different meanings okay because the term the refugees you know this means what those persons are who are outside the country of their origin of because of various reasons it may be of persecution conflict generalized violence or other circumstances that have seriously disturbed the public order and as a result they require the international protection as uh, you know the refugee definition you can find in the refugee convention of 1951 and the regional refugee instrument such as as well as an unhcr statute so you see that the term refugee is means those persons who are the outside the country of origins for various reasons of conflict feared persecution generalized files so these are the refugees those are the refugees and as we know on the international law we are governed by various treaties and convention for the refugees you have got the refugee convention of 1951 and you know what india is not a signatory to it the another term is that of like the migrant migrant is like there is a formal definition of an international marg migrant but most international you know experts agree that it is someone who like you know changes his or her country and usual residence irrespective of the reason for migration or legal status generally you know a distinction is made between a short term or temporary migration 
which is covering the movements with a duration between 3 and 12 months, a long term or a permanent migration referring to a change of a country of residence for a duration of one year or more. So you see that this, uh, this is a distinction you can see that. So because a refuge is the person who stay outside the country of origin for refuge for the reasons of fear, persecution, for violence. And the migrant are those persons who migrate from one place to another, you can say, who changes his country, his or her country, or his residence for a particular, it may be for various purposes. It may be for the purpose of employment, it may be for a better avenues, better opportunities, it may be throughout for, like, you know, fear too. But it may be for a short-term period, long-term period, or for a permanent period too. And asylum seekers, you know, there is another terminology, as I have said to you, before understanding about the international migration law, you should understand about who are the migrants. So before understanding who are the migrants also, we have to have a clear picture of these three words, that is your refugees, the migrants, and also the asylum seekers. I hope you are clear about the refugees, and you can also like connect the refugees with the Rohingya refugees, as though it was a very controversial issue. And there was gross violation of human rights of the Rohingya refugees because they wanted to take refuge in India but they were not permitted to do so and then the Bangladesh government have given them refuge. Later on you see the concept of migrant that the person migrate from one place to another it may be for various reasons it may be for the better opportunities it may be for the uh, like you know settlement it may be for a short term period for a longer period or for a permanent period so that is the meaning of migrant and asylum seeker is that those like you know person who seek asylum in another country for example the Dalai Lama is seeking asylum in our country India so these three very terminologies though undoubtedly they seem to be similar but they are not similar at all there are you know so I hope these three terminologies are clear to you moreover you see this international migration and uh, it occurs, you know, for various reasons. And it occurs when? It occurs when people, as I told you, that migration or the migrants are those people who move from one place to another or who migrate from one place to another. So you see this international migration also occurs when people cross state boundaries and stay in the whole state for some minimum length of time. As I have told you, it may be for a shorter period, for a longer period or for a permanent period. And there are various reasons for the migration. Many people leave their home countries in order to leave, look for the economic, you know, opportunities in other countries. As you know, brain drain, the concept of brain drain. As many people have migrated or shifted from India to abroad because of the very better economic facilities which are available in that particular places. So that is, you can see that people migrate. There is international migration even for the purpose of economic opportunities in other countries. Others migrate to be with the family members who have migrated or because of political conditions in their countries. Okay, this is the second very reason you can see that to be with the family members who have migrated or because of the political conditions in their countries. The third very reason is that education might be also the reason. As you know that a lot of people who want to pursue their education in other countries. So this is also another reason for international migration as students pursue the studies abroad. Why? You know, there are several different potential systems for categorizing also international migrants. One system organizes them. You can see that you can divide the international migrants into groups. One system divides them into nine groups. That is like you can see temporary labor migrants, irregular migrants, illegal migrants, undocumented migrants, highly skilled and business migrant migrants, refugees, asylum seekers, forced migration, family members, return migrants and long term low skilled migrants. These migrants can also be divided. So this is one form of migrants division that is like uh, you know it has been divided into nine groups. Again I am repeating it temporary migrants, temporary labor migrants who you know, migrate for a temporary period of time for the purpose of labor. Irregular migrants, okay, which is not regular. Illegal migrants who crosses one country to another without any legal documentation or in an illegal manner. There may be undocumented mig migrants who 
migrate from one place to another without the proper without carrying the proper documents as you know that we have suppose for example we want to go abroad we will definitely carry with us a proper documents while we are traveling so that is your word that is a documented migration right when some people move without any document they just cross the boundaries so these are undocumented migrants and you see there are highly skilled and the business migrants who go from migrate from one place to another for better business purposes then you have got the refugees one form of migrants you can say but it's different then forced migration is that forced ways them uh, like authority in uh, forcefully allow some people you know to migrate from one to another place to another then you have got return migrants and long term migrants too this migrants and there can be another definition uh, like uh, there can be another uh, you know um, division and that can be your uh, permanent and temporary migrants permanent migrants you know they intend to establish their permanent residence in a new country and possibly they obtain the citizenship of that country so these are the permanent migrants temporary migrants intend only to stay for a limited period of time so from the very you know term permanent that means they want to stay permanently they want to they have migrated for the purpose of permanent to attain the permanent citizenship of that country so if they can say to be they can be told as a permanent resident for example you know people stay um for the like you know they get the uh, some people go outside the country suppose from india they went outside to you know, usa to uk so after that they stay for a longer period of time and they attain the citizenship of that country so they are what they are the permanent migrants and temporary temporary migrants it you know the intent to establish you know only for a limited period of time perhaps the until the end of a particular study or program of study or a duration of their work contract or a certain work season and both you know this types of migrants they have a significant effect on the economies and the societies of the chosen destination country and the country of origin that, that is very different you see when the person migrate from one country to another country definitely these two countries will have an effect they have a significant effect on the economy also on the society too similarly you see that as we have divided the uh, you know migrants the into different groups there is also the countries there is a distinction you know there is a categorization where the, where the countries which receive this migrants are often grouped into four categories which which should receive this migrants they are the traditional settlement countries european countries which encourage labor you know migration after the second world war european countries which is receive a significant you know portion of the immigrant population from the former colonies and countries which formerly were points of migration but have recently emerged as immigrant destinations so you can see there is a categorization of this migrants too now there are various you know factors which led people for the migration there are various push factors and you know there are pull factors what are the push factors which pushed them to migrate from one place to another see one of the reason is that there is a very poor medical care in the place where they are staying there might be not enough jobs the unemployment reason there may be few opportunities the primary primitive conditions may uh, like one of the reason for migration there may be political fear is also one of the push factor of migration fear of torture and mistreatment is also one form of like you know the push factor for migration religious discrimination might be another reason loss of wealth natural disasters bullying lower chances of finding courtship so all these reasons are the certain push factors which leads to migration from one place to another and there are various pull factors push factors means what which is pushing them to migrate from one place to another for example in india we have as we know we don't have uh, like you know we can say the third uh the developing countries or the underdeveloped countries they want to move from uh, like people from those countries they want to move from one place to migrate from one place to another because of this push factors because they have the fear of 
uh, like you know because of the very low economic opportunities not enough jobs primitive conditions fear of torture religious discrimination there might be certain push factors and of their own country which led them to migrate to another country but there are certain pull factors which provoke them to enter into the other country which we wanted to migrate so the various pull factors is that a better living standard chances of getting a job enjoyment education better medical care security family links lower crime better chances of finding courtship so these are the various reasons why uh, like you know people migrate from one place to another so i hope you have got a brief idea about what is uh, like you know international migration what are the reasons behind the migration what are the three you know terms which should be you know which you should have a clear picture about it that is the refugees the asylum seekers and also uh, the migrant because we are mainly focusing on the migration law and dealing with the migrant population now you see that what exactly is the international migration law as you have already studied in public international law PIL so international migration law you can say that it is a part of that PIL also because it is dealing with a specific part moreover it is all uh, this international law is quite broader but you know it has certain like you know it has certain this uh, you know um, it has certain like um, a defect in it certain loopholes so even international migration law has a loophole you know this particular international migration law also is uh, a, you cannot say that it is a particularly it has a per, uh, like it is in a codified form it is not in a codified form you cannot find it in a single uh, like in a, in one legal instrument it is like you know it can be said as that it is a international legal framework which governs migration but it is not covered by any one legal instrument or norm instead you know this international migration law it is an umbrella term which is covering a variety of principles and rules that together regulate the international obligation of states with regard to migrants so such broad range of principles and rules it belongs to numerous branches of international law so you see that it is not in a codified form in a single you know in one legal instrument so it is in an umbrella form and it belongs this principles the rules of it it belong to numerous branches of international law as you know you have got the numerous branches of international law because international law is quite broader in nature and there are different branches of international law you have got the human rights law the humanitarian law labor law the refugee law the consular law and maritime law so all this law from the all this laws you get the principles the rules and regulations relating to migration so you see that this particular international migration law it is not codified in a single you know single codified form or in a single legal instrument or not it is in a and you know umbrella form carrying law of principles and rules from different branches of the international law moreover you see uh, like um, iom it is also one of the organization which will be dealing with uh, later on that is international organization of migration this also works uh, like it is an organization which works to increase the knowledge and acceptance of the legal instruments that protect the migrant right as well as the ratification and implementation um, of uh, implementation status of this instruments so you see it also assists the states in developing the migration policies and legislations that conform to iml in order to manage migration more effectively and in a manner consistent with international law so iom that is international organization of migration is working to the fullest to protect the migrants rights to manage the migration more effectively so you see uh, it also has a iml unit it also established the iml unit uh, the institutional organization the international organization of migration it has created the international migration law unit for better working on the rights of the migrants for specifically dealing with the migration law so you see that there is no single as we know that there is no single uh, like you know one legal framework of international migration 
so it becomes very important to collect the information on IML and frame it in an accessible and comprehensible way. So this work is done by the IOM, the Institution of uh, International Organization of Migration. You know, it seeks to consolidate IML information and make it more easily accessible through legal research and its online migration law data database. IOM also works to disseminate information on IML that is in order to spread awareness to academics, governmental policy makers, international organizations and also the non-governmental organization. Okay, so this is about the international migration law in a brief manner. The certain meaning of the international migration and like what is the purpose behind the migration. So I'll provide you a PPT on that and in the next very lecture I will have a brief this I will I will explain you in an elaborate manner how this international migration law has evolved and what is the importance of international migration law because it has not been evolved totally it is evolving now it is not you cannot say that it has developed in a total form as you have the constitution you have got our laws in a you know codified manner but this international migration law is not codified it is we cannot find that in a you know one legal instrument so we have to like compile all this from the various branches of international law and it is still evolving it has evolved back since you know uh, like you can go back to 1919 and till now it is evolving it has not stopped evolving so we'll be dealing with that in the next class thank you